Hey guys, it's Justin again with another work in progress video. If you remember the last work in progress, we uh, we wrapped up the medals on this guy. I didn't show everything fully off, but uh, I finished it. Um, so all the armor's painted, all the frame is painted, um, and you're probably like Justin. What what's the rest here? Why why are you? Why, what are we doing? Um, so um, I've got a few pieces left that I need to mask and paint and do like detailing and stuff on. Uh, but I'm going to wait until after I decal and weather everything. Now, um, I'm fortunate enough to have made the greatest trade deal of, of all time with uh, Josh Dara. Um, and we, I don't remember what exactly we traded, but somehow I ended up with the entire large decal set that came with the premium Providence Gundam. Uh, and I'm like 99% certain that that has decals for this kit on it. So, um, I have the decals for this kit. Yay. Um, so as soon as I figure out where I stuck that, um, or I, maybe I won't use the whole thing, maybe I'll do some of my own decals, and then, like, I was thinking about using just the ones that said, like, Buster and stuff like that, but a lot of those seem to be on here as well, so maybe I'll just use the dry transfers, because dry transfers look really nice. Um, and then do, like, some generic decaling or something. I, I don't know what I'm going to do fully yet, uh, either way, this thing does need a gloss coat, so I just wanted to show you where I was at, what I'd done. Um, I'm gonna throw a little gloss down. Um, we're gonna do the decals, uh, and then we're gonna start weathering. So um, I'm not gonna bore you with the decals, but I will give you a little bit of a chipping demo. Uh, we're gonna try our best to match what we've done on the head, which if you've forgotten from the last whip or if you're new, um, just kind of light chips. Uh, helps the post shading pop a little bit. Um, you know, we're, we're just gonna we're gonna keep things nice and subtle, a little classy. Um, but all all of our main colors are done. Everything looks so much nicer than I thought it would. Um, you can pop these bad boys open. All the missiles are in there. Uh, looks like they got a little scuffed up from the uh, the door. So what I'm gonna have to do with that is I guess I'm gonna have to. Um, Chip the <laughs> chip the missiles a little bit, which is going to be a little strange, but we'll figure something out. Um, so after all that's done, I'm going to mask off and paint these last few metal details that I want to pop out. Just because, um, I mean, even though it's going to be all flat coated when everything's said and done, uh, I'm not really going to do a whole bunch of chipping over like the metallic details. Um, I'll let like my washes and stuff do all the work for that. So let's go ahead and look at some of these pieces and we'll, we'll look at what I've done. Uh, so there's a chest. Muted that out with a dark gray. Um, that pesky gap is just unavoidable. I, I sanded and sanded and sanded and could not figure out uh, how to get rid of that. So there it is on one side. I close it up and it's back on the other side. So uh, I guess I just meet it in the middle and uh, I don't know. So if anybody knows what, what causes that, please let me know. Um, did a little bit of like copper on the backpack. Uh, some silver up here. Uh, some nice muted grays for the thrusters. Um, some silvers down here on the sides. You know, simple stuff like that. Um, it came out really well. For the back, or for the, the backpack, for the hips, uh, the waist. We've got uh, all the tans, um, that nice dark gray, uh, more tans, tan thrusters, um, and I did, I did go a little hard uh, on the undersides of the skirts, so you can see that um, on the front and on the back as well. Um, so very happy with the way that came out. Um, so that that is uh, definitely a, a plus. Uh, we saw this already. Detailed out the uh, the pistons that are on here. I just used the stickers for the uh, the cameras. Um, that steel looks so nice in there. I did a nice, a small like uh, aluminum accent on the shoulders. Nothing too crazy. Kept it real subtle. Um, I didn't separate the elbow like I originally thought I was going to. Um, I'm just gonna save all that for like these little. Uh, latch marks and stuff like that uh, that's where we're gonna get all of our color separation on this bit um, we saw the gun uh, pistons 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 uh, mi you know mix it up a little bit with the metals 
um, kept it again kind of classy uh, the legs um, I painted this whole under piece here let's see if I can get this off without scratching um, it's all done in steel and then like the piping and the little top piece up here is done in uh, aluminum and then this is also this whole piece up here is done in aluminum so there's a nice bit of variation going on um, I almost I almost painted this uh, this top piece right here copper I'm kind of glad I didn't because I think it might have clashed uh, being up against um, tan so I think not doing that worked in my favor um, but I did put a little copper accent inside the knee and I did paint this little section right up here silver or aluminum so and then there's also a, aluminum and copper inside the knee uh, the sliding thing for the knee the piston uh, the thrusters instead of being red are aluminum very happy with that uh, did the ankles up uh, so that little bolt the bolt on the side are done in aluminum the piston itself and the housing is done in copper um, bottoms of the feet didn't go too crazy but I, I mix it up a little bit just so there's a little love going on in there um, you know I wanted I wanted the this thing to, to shine from most every angle so uh, right now I think I pulled it off um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna go off camera I'll um, gloss coat this I will decal this um, and then I'll probably throw a flat coat down and then we'll come back we'll look at it and we'll talk about some chipping so uh, I'll see you guys in a second hey guys it's Justin again with another work in progress video this is gonna be the third and more than likely the final work in progress video for this model kit um, on this whip we are going to go over some weathering we're gonna talk about how we're gonna weather this kit um, I'm not going super heavy with it. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some light chipping. Uh, I might I might do a little streaking and I might dabble a little bit with some weathering pigments. Uh, but I'm not gonna go like super crazy overboard with it. I just want a light chipping effect to make it look like this kit has seen a little bit of action. And then we're gonna move into uh, you know like I said, putting a little bit of pigment down, making it look like it's been uh, like it's seen a little action stuff like that so for the first segment of this we're gonna go ahead and touch on um, applying chips applying chips is probably the most basic thing you can do to weather a model kit uh, and I think that it's a really fundamental thing that you can do to weather a model kit because it doesn't require a whole lot out of you um, and it's probably the first thing that's gonna happen outside of like accumulating dirt in certain places just from walking around um, so the first order of business is uh, materials. You're going to need some paint um, for your chips. So from my lighter colors, I'm going to be using uh, Vallejo's Mecha Color Chipping Brown. You can use a dark rust color. You can use a brown. You can use uh, you can use pretty much anything you want, really. As long as in in this case, um, I'm not necessarily going per se for. Uh, the weathering color underneath is going to um, necessarily reflect the, the material that's underneath. I'm just providing some contrast here. That's that's basically what I'm going for. Um, and then for uh, the green and the dark gray parts, I'm going to be using Vallejo's uh, Light Steel from the Mecha Color range. So again, I'm just going for contrast here. I'm not really shooting necessarily for hey this is what's underneath this I just want something to, to provide a little bit of contrast uh, make it pop a little bit um, so you can use a paint tray um, so I've got a small one here it's a little dirty but I've got a couple of uh, open spaces in it so I'm going to make use of those uh, and then you're gonna want a paper towel just one little one little square should be fine you don't need a ton of paper towel don't, don't go grab the whole roll um, if you don't need it um, just for the sake of demonstration, we're going to use that piece. Um, so, oh, and the last thing you're going to need is uh, some sponge. Uh, this is, uh, if you've ever used a kitchen sponge, um, it's got two sides to it. 
Um, one is a sponge side, the other is this little like Brillo pad kind of thing. Uh, I like to put them in these, uh, it's just a spare alligator clip. Uh, what I do is I kind of twist it and then fold it and make like a little bit of a point. And then I stick it inside the alligator clip and then I just kind of hold it like it's a pencil. Um, and we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. So, uh, alligator clip, sponge, paint tray, paint, paper towel, piece. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move this in so you can get in a little closer. You can see what's going on here. We can, you know, demonstrate some of this action. Let's see if my camera's going to focus. It looks a little out of focus. Come on. It's not doing it. It's like just out of focus. Almost. Oh, one moment. Let me uh, let me just manually focus it. Unless, well, actually, you know what? No, that'll be fine. Because holding it up will put it right where I need it to be anyway. So, okay. <clears throat> uh, oh, look, now it's focused. Awesome. So, <laughs> um, the the methodology behind this, and uh, I use this as a test piece. Um, this is the head to the mobile suit. Um, I just kind of went around the sides uh, because your su the sides are going to be grazed by things uh, as you move or as it moves. Um, a lot of hard edges and things like that will receive uh, the most wear and then like just kind of the sides, whatever it would brush up against. Uh, if it happens to see combat, it may receive damage in places that it might not normally. Um, or it may receive heavier damage in places where it would otherwise. Um, and that's kind of hard to just, like, put out there because, you know, it's not a real thing. So, I'm going to go ahead and put, uh, let's do two drops of this just to start with. Uh, this stuff kind of dries up a little bit quick, so I'm just going to move kind of fast. So, just take the tip of that, dip it in the paint, and you want to dot it off until... There is almost nothing left, so there we go, that's what we're going to call it. And then I'm just going to kind of follow like this front little contour here. I'm just going to just dab it all over the front. Not all the way across, but just pick out some hard edges and just kind of poke it a few times. There we go, look at that. And if you rotate this, it will add a little bit more randomness to what you're doing. Um, it will kind of help with the weathering. Um, now this is my first time committing to just the sponge. Uh, I normally will kind of block my own chips in that way, uh, but this time I wanted to try something a little bit more random. Um, where this has been gloss coated. Um, if I needed to get rid of this, um, I could just hit it with a little bit of water uh, while it's still not totally dry. I mean, this is basically a dry brush, so um, it dries fairly quickly, but if, as long as I get it within like the, the first like 10 or 15 minutes, I should be able to wipe it off without too much trouble. So, um, as you can see, this little... This little fin down here hangs uh, at like a really sharp corner, and I imagine that this would catch on a lot of things, so I'm just trying to bang that up just a little bit more. Uh, and then the same thing with like these back ones here, uh, just paying a little bit of extra care to those. That, that's a little more tucked back, so I'll, I'll throw some chips in there, but it's not super important that it, that it gets them. Uh, but this big panel up here that sticks on top of everything might receive a little bit more wear than the rest. So you gotta, you gotta kind of think about it as you do it. Um, and the more you do it, the more you'll kind of think about it and you'll understand what I mean. But, um, you know, just, just play with it.
right, so now I'm going to take this, I'm going to unwrap it, I'm going to wrap it the other way, and then fold it again. And basically all this is doing is changing the shape uh, of the, uh, the brush a little bit and changing the, uh, the randomness of my chips. It's, it's kind of like resetting it. Um, and then I can just kind of go back in and it, it might not seem super apparent at first, but as you start doing this, uh, some of these shapes will be very similar, especially if you kind of forget to rotate the, uh, the brush. So if you, uh, every so often reseat the sponge you will uh, recreate the surface and get a different shape out of it Now you can also kind of like, like drag it a little bit. Um, sometimes that works better than, it, you know, in some places it works better than others. But um, what that'll do is give you some really light scratches in a direction if that's an effect that you're looking for. Uh, alternatively, you can go ahead and just do that with a brush um, if that's what you'd prefer. So these chips are a little, a little heavy right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of blend these in just a little bit uh, by kind of heavying up that edge right there. Um, That's looking pretty good. So uh, let's go ahead and move. Let's get a little bit on this side. I didn't really do too much to this or the back end of this. Reseat this one more time. Um, let's let's twist it over here and flip it this way. And then with this one, we're just going to kind of chip the uh, the top a little bit here Let's see I didn't get too much of that off I think I messed it up a little bit there we go that's a little closer to what I wanted I think this paint actually might, like I said, it dries pretty quickly. If you want to go ahead and throw like a drop or two of retarder in there to help you out, that might work to your advantage as well. There we go. That's that's what I was looking for. And remember to dab it off until it's almost gone. And that's how you're going to get the most uh, random and realistic looking chips. Uh, kind of work into this corner a little bit. Um, with a 
down some of these edges. Another thing you can do is you can actually take these armor pa armor panels off if you if you so desire, and um, kind of treat them individually. Um, if you you know if if that's what you want to do, if you think that uh, you know working them while they're together is too difficult or not um, working in the way that you want it to, you can try working them separately. See if that uh, yields a better effect for you. If it's closer to what your what your goal is, uh, this is working fine for me, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Um, and then another thing I'll be doing is uh, every new piece I will use a new sponge. So come back down here, touch on this a little bit. This is all in the back, so it's not really going to receive too much wear on its own. Um, just kind of get in there a couple times. If you if you kind of like dab it real hard just once it also leaves like really weird looking like dark marks um, again I'm just experiment with it try using it in different ways um, you know you can I would say twist it but I don't see how that would work too much to uh, make a realistic chipping effect but I'm very happy with that I think that looks pretty good uh, it's not too overdone um, and I think the effect looks really nice. It, it'll uh, translate really well once the whole thing is put together. Um, and then the, the next thing I'm going to show you is uh, the silver. So I'm actually going to use two pieces of sponge for this because I'm, I'm doing two different chipping colors. So let's spin that around. And for this one, we're going to use the silver. And that's just going to go on uh, the gray pieces and maybe a tiny bit on the frame. And we apply this very much the same way of, as everything else we've done so far. So just to kind of lightly dab that onto some of the corners and some of the sharp bits. And again, you can kind of hit some of this stuff if you want. Uh, sometimes this stuff is a little more suited for like a dry brush. If that's, if this like doesn't really go for what you're, which or doesn't look how you want it to, this works for me. Uh, I'm not the craziest about it, but 
Uh, it looks fine, but I can deal with it. Let's just kind of do some more up here. Let's get the, not forget the top. That would that would be a disaster. There we go. That's pretty good. Um, so that's I'm gonna call that ready. Um, so next, this will receive a flat coat, uh, and then after flat coat, um, I can start to apply a little bit of pigment to it, or if I want to do other uh, other effects, uh, that would be a good time to do that because um, those tend to stick a little bit better to a flat surface uh, because there's a little bit of texture for it to bite onto. Um, so keep that in mind you can you can also do this over flat if you if you want um, so I'm very pleased with that um, so that's chipping I'm gonna finish chipping this and then we'll come back um, and then we'll look at the next uh, step in the weathering process all right guys we're back we have the Buster Gundam uh, chipped, assembled, flat coated. Um, now I could leave this just like this, and I think I'd be happy with it. Um, I, I'm actually quite pleased uh, with the weathering and the effects and stuff that I've done so far, um, and that's just been pretty minimal. Um, like I said, I, I did a uh, little bit of a post shade. I did. Uh, some a little tiny bit of weathering on some decals, mostly the dry transfers, um, and you know I, I kept it very. I don't want to say plain, but you know I didn't go super heavy with decals. I didn't go super heavy with weathering. Um, I just wanted the the focus to be like the colors, the uh, the work that went in, stuff like that. So. Um, like I said, post shading and the, the chipping, it helps it pop a lot. It looks like it's dirty. It's seen some action. It's been out there. Um, but we're going to take it just a little bit further. We're not going to push it too much. We're just going to take it a little further. Um, and we're going to do this in two steps. Two very small steps. Um, the first step is going to be the Tamiya Weathering Master sets. So I bought the entire collection off of uh, Amazon for... Uh, I want to say it was 30 some bucks with Prime. Uh, you get six sets. Um, and these guys are really cool. Um, there's, um, we're going to do them backwards. Um, so the, the last set is uh, metals. So titanium, light gun metal, and copper. This is really good for like your weapons and stuff like that. I might actually go ahead and brush on a little bit of that titanium and that light gun metal over the frame, a little bit on some of the darker parts, um, just to kind of get a little bit of a sheen going. Uh, next we've got just some some dry brushing effects. These are yellow, gray, and green. Again, I could very much use these right here, uh, and I very well, I just might. Um, so you get a yellow, gray, and a green, and this is a perfect palette for this mobile suit, believe it or not. I didn't even plan that out. Um, so there those are um, that might be a thing uh, next we get uh, a little bit more metallic stuff but we also get some additional uh, oil stains so burnt blue and burnt red this is uh, if you've ever seen metal heat up and uh, I can't think of the, the term right now what it is uh, anodizing if you anodize metal um, that, that's typically running electricity through it but you can get a similar effect by warming it um, and when you get like a really, really, really hot optimal burn, it kind of turns blue, but there's also like a burnt red. Uh, and then the oil stain effects is very much what it sounds like, oil stain effects. Um, weathering set C is uh, a little bit of rust, which I won't be using. Uh, gun metal, which might get a little bit of use. And silver, which eh, maybe I think that might be a little strong for what I'm doing. Uh, set B, you have a dark rust color, soot, which will definitely be getting used, uh, and snow, which I think I'm going to stay away from on this one. 
Uh, and then weathering set A, which is probably your most basic. This is probably, if, you're gonna, if you had to choose between one of these sets, uh, I'd probably tell you to grab this one because you get three types of environment uh, effects out of this. And you can stack these two very nicely to build a really good effect. Uh, but you also get the mud, which looks really nice. Uh, I think these two are probably the most well-rounded altogether because uh, you get a really nice set of, uh, like, you get like a full environment set to start with. Uh, but then you also get soot and rust, so you can you can kind of blend your effects in. And then from there you can just kind of pick up what you might need. Or you can do like I did and just buy the whole set. Um, so my number one goal here is I want to build some mud effects. Uh, around the bottoms of the feet and stuff so I'm thinking maybe like like down here at the bottoms of the feet or the legs uh, up to the feet just kind of hit that with some dry brush uh, kind of cake a little bit of that on uh, see what we can come up with uh, soot is going to be put on where my vents and stuff are so like here on the silver uh, on the backs of the arms the backs of the legs stuff like that where there's vents uh, I'm going to try and follow the path that that vent uh, angles at just so I can you know be consistent um, I'm gonna put this over here just in case I decide to use it uh, and then we'll keep this out in case I decide to use that as well so we're gonna start with um, with this because this is this is basically the the one that I really was set on using um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of grind this in just a little bit get this applicator nice and kind of coated on and I'm just going to start dabbing it on to the foot uh, the foot is is my prime concern here just because um, this is is really the first chance you get to build an effect uh, color wise that looks like you've you've been walking around in dirt um, you're not necessarily going to get a lot of grime build up here. Uh, if you want physical grime, we'll talk about that here soon. Because uh, I'm going to do a little bit of it. Not very much. But I do want this to have a nice base for that. Um, and all I'm doing is just kind of dabbing it occasionally. Kind of swiping it on. Um, build those build those tones uh, this might be easier if I took the model apart again but I really don't feel like it so this is the way it's gonna go um, we're just gonna stay along that bottom edge uh, if you want to get a little dangerous and kind of travel up some of these sides go for it that's that's your call um, but I'm gonna stay pretty close to the bottom I hit a couple of these lips a couple of these these edges uh, go up the side of this just a tiny bit And that's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Bring inside the leg, the foot. Really good in there. You can also, the same sponges and stuff you used to do your chipping, you can use for this stuff as well if you don't want to use your applicators uh, or mess your applicators up. Uh, which I don't know why you would buy a weathering set and not want to use your applicators, but there, I guess there's somebody out there. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'll take this, and the same way I used it for my dry brushing, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get in here, and you're going to get a little bit more of a texture with it this way. Now, you want to be a little more careful if you're going to apply it this way, because this this thing can act like sandpaper. Um, so you can definitely pull paint off um, and it's the, the effect is a little more subtle uh, but I did want to show that you can do it so I'm gonna go back to the applicator because I prefer that um, so now that I've built that effect around the bottom of the foot I'm gonna kind of hit the top of the foot just a little bit gonna come in give a second light pass just to kind of blend it in a little bit if you need to go back along that bottom edge go ahead uh, just build that effect up real nice 
And then we're going to start working on the ankle guard. Uh, same method, just stick to the bottom. Um, and I think that might actually do it for me. That, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Now we just got to get the other one. This doesn't take real long. This stuff works really well. So you did the inside of the foot that time first. a little bit build that effect some tops of the foot nice and dirty and you can see that it doesn't it doesn't act like paint it it actually sort of uh, it works almost like shading it'll it'll sort of blend itself in a little bit um, and give you that real nice uh, effect with what you're doing Okay, so we're gonna hit this other ankle guard real quick. And I'm gonna call that done. Again, I'm, I'm not going super hard on this part. Uh, the biggest concentration of this, I wanted to be on the feet. So that is it for that set. Now, if I wanted to, to convey that he was in a sand area, I probably would have gone ahead and used the, the heavy sand first hit like maybe like the waist or the chest down uh, like the lower arms a little bit on the shoulders uh, maybe once or twice just built that effect up and then I would have came back with a with the heavy sand and got like all around all the nooks and crannies but this uh, the mud I just wanted around the feet alright so uh, now that that one's done let's go ahead and pull out I got the wrong one um, Let's pull out the soot. And again, the soot, like I said, is going to be um, kind of wherever there's a vent. So, like on the backs of the legs, there's these vents that point downward. I'm just going to kind of hit this top edge right here with the soot color make it look like the exhaust has really like blown down on the back of that leg uh, and you can even use it inside the vent uh, it's not going to show crazy well but if you can build that effect down towards the bottom of the feet it'll really help sell what you're going for um, and again I'm not I'm not trying to go super heavy with this um, I do want to convey, though, where some of this stuff is happening. So, that's fine for right there. Uh, there's a vent here on the uh, back side of the hips that will receive just a little bit, not too much. We'll go around the top for that one as well because it looks like it kind of exhausts upward and outward. Um, two smaller vents right here we can just kind of get in there real real gently on that not too much um, there's two vents on the backpack so we'll just kind of hit this top area here and a little bit on this little middle piece just to show that it does it, it can you know kind of warm that up a little bit uh, now this is where things are going to start seeming questionable some people uh, I personally think that these will kind of vent out some heat on the arms here so I'm going to just lightly I'm not gonna go super crazy with it but lightly build that up on the arms blend that in just push that effect up just a tiny bit if you need to use the other end you can kind of 
like blend it out a little bit. And that looks good to me. So, um, so again, you don't have to do that. If, if you don't think that's a, a good place for it, don't do it by all means. Uh, but I think that that's a good spot for it, so that's what's going to happen. Now there's these smaller vents on the front. I'm not going to worry about those. I don't think those are really going to do too much. Uh, and these are kind of blocked by the guns. Um, and there's not really a whole lot of area to hit them anyway. So I can fold these guns down. And uh, kind of, there we go. kind of get that bottom lip just a little bit. Uh, and this might be where like your your gunmetal colors come in, because um, you can really kind of bring out some shine or use some oil streaking or something like that uh, for this. But that's that's good enough for me. I'm gonna call that done. So. Uh, one last thing I am going to touch with these before I put them away uh, is the guns. Um, I, obviously, I don't want this thing to look beaten to hell, but um, the guns are obviously, I mean, the rest of the mobile suit is a little dirty. Chances are the, the weapons have seen a little bit of action. So let's go over this back uh, barrel here with the, with the soot. Get the inside. Just kind of get along that edge. Sturdy that up nice and. There we go. That's pretty good. Alright. And then on the, uh, the main barrel for this one. Same thing. Just hit it with some soot. Uh, even though I'm pretty sure this is some sort of laser. Um, it's not really my prime concern right now. I just want to show that it has been used. Um, I'll probably put some like back here. And this would be a good spot if you wanted to use that um, that metallic, uh, the red and blue metallics. Uh, you could definitely kind of like get in there and show off some of the. Um, the effects here. I'm going to do like a really light brush of the dark over kind of the middle here just to dinge this up a little. Um, kind of dirty it up some. Just so it doesn't look so plain uh, after that final flat coat. So that's good for that. Uh, I, I'll, I'll live with that. Put a little bit of uh, soot over these pistons. Go darken that, dull that metal down just a little bit. So that's it for B. Um, so let's go ahead with uh, with set E. Let's take this green here. And let's just kind of hit some of these edges just a little bit, kind of add a little bit of variation to some of this and you don't really gotta go crazy but you know highlight those edges a little bit because uh, this was kind of made for I believe these were definitely primarily made for uh, like uh, tanks and stuff so um, and this is accenting very nicely um, Then I can even take some of this yellow and kind of dry brush it over some of these edges here. But that's not really that necessary, so. And the effect is very subtle. Um, you actually probably won't be able to see it if I just show it to you. So I'll, I'll do the, the bottoms of the legs and in the final pictures. Uh, maybe it'll pop a little bit because you can you can see it on the edges. It kind of highlights the edges really well. 
uh, but it doesn't do too much besides that. Alright, and on to the last one that we're going to use before we uh, bust out the actual pigments uh, is this metal set. Um, again, I'm not going to go super crazy with this stuff. I'm just going to pick a few spots and highlight. Uh, so like the chest vents here, get a very light metal uh, that'll also kind of dinge up the chest itself a little bit. The cockpit hatch, that's definitely going to be moving a lot. Um, I'm going to hit these knees some. And it's really going to like make those edges stick out. Again, the, kind of highlight the metals on the arms. And you really don't need to do a ton to make these really work. Um, because the obviously the more you do it, the, the heavier the effect is going to be. So I'm not... I'm not going like really crazy with it. I'm just kind of highlighting just a real quick, uh, you know, go over some of these parts, uh, make some of these edges stick out a little bit, um, and and just give some definition to what I've already done. Uh, and you can really see that that silver poke through. Like, let's see, what's a good piece to show it on that I haven't done yet? Um, too many examples because so I've done everything so it, it, it just kind of gives a nice metallic sheen to everything and it looks really good um, so that is where I'm gonna call that this is almost done I just got one more thing to do and I'll be totally happy with it uh, and that is going to be pigments so we're gonna actually use real actual you know actual pigments like this. so I'm here in my little handy dandy weathering drawer uh, we're going to go ahead and bust out a little bit of this, like this, um, that'd be good. Yep, so, uh, what I'm going to use for these is, uh, MIGS, uh, weathering pigments, I'm going to use Dark Earth. And I'm going to use some pigment fixer to keep them in place. Um, now, stand by because I've never. Oh, I'm pretty sure this. I know what's going to happen here, but I'm going to try it anyway. Um, I'm pretty sure this is going to melt this, but if I'm lucky, it won't. Um, and what I'm going to apply it with is just an old, crappy brush that's no good. Uh, this is pretty much dried out and you know not very, not very good. So shake this up a little bit, and I'm just going to put a tiny, 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 tiny little bit, if I can get the lid off in here. That might be too much. So far, so good. Um, we're going to use our brush, pull some of this out, drop it in the fixer. Uh, now there's a handful of ways that you can use this stuff. Uh, the way I'm using it is going to be to make, uh, oops, I'm going to make like a, I don't want to say a paste, but I'm going to thicken up the pigment and turn it into um, almost like a really thick paint. Um, so kind of like, kind of like that should, actually that might be too, too thin still. Um, so that's a little bit more there. I don't. I definitely don't need this much, but um, that's just how much thinner I happen to pour fixer. Um, that might be a little better. Okay, so we got to mix that in, get it nice and cruddy. And it's a little closer to what I want. Still kind of thin. Let me do just a little more. And this is the, the guessing game portion of this. Now the beauty of using pigments is you can mix them uh, just like you would paint. 
and you'll get a variety of effects now this is definitely more than I wanted to use but um, when else am I going to use this stuff let's be honest so all right uh, old crappy brush and we're just going to kind of hit the bottoms of the feet just kind of randomly so um, don't really be too afraid of it uh, now it looks kind of crappy right now it looks kind of weird but when it dries I promise it will look a lot better um, just on its own uh, because what's going to happen is that fixer is going to evaporate and it's going to leave behind those particles it's not mixed like paint uh, it looks like it's mixed like paint but it's it's still got texture and stuff to it it's just there's a lot of the fixer left behind uh, right now so Uh, when this dries, it should, hopefully, uh, unless I'm I'm wrong, which I hope I'm not, um, it should dry just like little clumps of dirt. Uh, what the fixer does is basically um, it kind of acts like uh, glue almost. It will uh, slowly evaporate and it'll leave behind pigment and keep it where you put it um, and that's kind of what we're going for here I'm hoping that it works the way I want it to um, also this stuff really stinks so if you're kind of susceptible to smells and stuff you might want to get a mask when you're using this uh, I'm not too terribly worried about it because I'm not spraying it and I'm not atomizing it. So, um, you know, I can just move it away from myself a little bit and not work as closely, and I think I'd be okay. Um, but I'm almost done, so whatever. a little bit of that on back here looks like some dirt is kind of accumulated on the bottom here I'm really hoping this evaporates the way that it's supposed to worst case scenario I just kind of go back over it the other way and we get two lessons So that's that's looking a lot like paint rather than um, pigment I guess um, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and do some kind of light like splattering effects I guess um, and that's just kind of flicking the brush while wow, there's paint loaded on it or well pigment loaded on it you should probably lay down some paper towel or something before you do this um, especially if you don't have a dedicated workstation um, or if you don't want to get your dedicated workstation dirty I just don't really care um, flip it around and do it back just a little bit Now the other thing that just just happened and occurred to me, you know, which I just noticed now, is that uh, <laughs> my my gun barrel's in the way uh, of that that dirt chipping or uh, dirt splatter that I just did. I probably should have accounted for that before I started doing it, uh, but fortunately you can just kind of wipe this stuff off and it's all good. Um, but with that, you also wipe away all that soot stuff you did. So I'm going to let this dry for a little bit. We'll come back. We'll scope it out. 
Um, but it's looking pretty good. It's just not quite exactly what I thought it was going to do. So hopefully when it's dry dry, it'll be what I want. Uh, but if it's not, I know how to get what I want. I just wanted to try another method. So we'll be back in a little bit and we'll check it out. All right, so we're back. Um, the effect didn't fully go how I wanted it to. It's it's close. Uh, it's dried like mud, much like mud. Uh, there's a l we lost a lot of the texture. That's the the problem that, that I'm having. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of elevate his feet a little bit. There we go. We're going to pull this piece of masking tape off the thruster on the bottom of the foot because that doesn't need to be there. That step is optional. <laughs> um, we're going to come back with this um, this pigment. We're going to use another crappy old brush that we're not going to use for anything else. Um, I wish I knew where all my other crappy brushes are. Oh, wait, I do know where they are. I told you. So. I don't know what this brush is or where it came from or whatever. Uh, it's a one-four brush. It's really weird and round and kind of, kind of tough. Um, we're literally just gonna dip this in the pigment, pick up a bunch of it. Actually, before I do that, let's get out some paper towel uh, because I don't want this all over my desk and then it's gonna get on the floor and then it's it's gonna be just everywhere. Um, so save myself on cleanup uh, we will do this the way that it's probably best to do it over some paper towels okay now just dab the end in there and just kind of dab it along the foot and the way we did it isn't necessarily a bad thing or a wrong way to do it um, you can use it just like we're using it as a base um, for this this effect you don't have to trace the entire bottom of the foot if you don't want to if you want to leave like certain bits exposed and uh, you know what this is going to do is add the texture to the mud uh, it's going to blend in and it will add a lot of that dirty earthy texture that mud has um, and you, this using it this way you can also get it in the bottoms of the feet if you want to do that uh, so we'll do just a little bit just for the sake of, of demoing it that way put a tiny bit on some of these little pieces of mud up here uh, I'm not gonna go super nuts on that um, and that should that should be fine all right, so now that that is done the proper way this time, um, you can use a different brush if you so desire. You can use the same brush. Uh, you might want to clean it when you're done either way. Uh, even if it's a crappy brush, you will want to uh, you know, use this as long as you can. So now you're just going to use the pigment fixer, and you're just going to dab it on. Get it in there, and it looks it looks a lot like it pulls a lot of it away, uh, and you will lose some of it. That's why you want to go a little bit heavier than you might otherwise. But uh, just kind of touch these edges now. Another thing is, if you haven't painted like the entirety of these pieces, uh, if you're doing this over bare plastic, you might want to top coat first because uh, this stuff can make your plastic brittle if you're not careful because uh, I believe that this particular brand is enamel based you don't have to use enamel based you can you can spray this with like water water from like a spray bottle if you have like one of those spray bottles that like um, like Mr. Clean or whatever comes in and it's just got water in it um, I said Mr. Clean I meant Windex 
um, you can totally fix this in with water uh, but uh, as a drawback to that if you use water it's not going to be as strong as if you use alcohol or enamel thinner it's going to be as strong as the base you use it with so um, this is going to give it one of the stronger types of finishes that you can get out of it it's going to make sure that it stays there and if worse comes to worse and I don't like the effect I can still get rid of it using lighter fluid or, or enamel thinner um, so there's always that and it won't affect my paint job at all uh, it might affect my chipping a little bit but all right so I think that's what we're gonna call that um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean that off a little bit and that's ready for action again so um, now when this dries, this should look a lot nicer. You can already see that it still maintained that texture. Um, and again, there's no reason you can't mix the two like we did in this. Um, and then just kind of get that that base and then put your texture down. But when this dries, it's done. This, this model kit will be finished. So uh, there's not going to be any more on this video. We're going to just leave it how it is. Um, so after this, we're going to see, uh, maybe not directly after this, but soon after this, we're going to see some, uh, some photos. I'm going to try and get a bunch of photos. I'm not going to do a ton of posing because this is a commission, remember. Um, I can't exactly justify spending as long painting this uh, for a client, posing it and playing with it, uh, and then sending it off, you know, because somebody paid for this. So uh, I'll do what I can. I might, I might pose it a little bit, not too much. Um, but it's mostly going to be standing shots. I'll try and get some of the details and stuff worked out. Um, but hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, it's been fun. It's been fast. Uh, I, I did this a lot quicker than I thought I would. Um, and I had a, a lot of fun doing it. I love uh, the Seed Master Grades. They're, they're a lot of fun to work on. They're a lot of fun to play with. Uh, they're a lot of fun to customize. So... <clears throat> Um, hopefully you guys are looking forward to my next whip series. It's going to be a blast. Uh, I'm very excited for it. Um, I'm just debate, trying to debate on whether or not I want to uh, stretch it out uh, and do something else while I'm working on it or if I just want to knock that one out too. Uh, time will tell based on how difficult it is to work on. Uh, so we'll see very soon and uh, hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. Uh, Remember, if, if you guys want your kits featured at the end of my videos, go ahead and uh, hit that link down below. Um, submit your model kits. I don't care if they're painted. I don't care if they're uh, kit bashed. I don't care if they're, you know, whatever. If you guys think it looks cool, go ahead and throw it in a submission. What's the worst that could happen, guys? All right. So I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.